Hello and welcome to today's class. For today, we'll be looking at the resolution of vectors in 2D. All right, so I'm going to explain the meaning of resolution of vectors in 2D. Let's start with the first step: resolution of vectors. Now, when we say resolution of vectors, what do we mean? The resolution of vectors is simply the splitting of a singular vector into two or more vectors in different directions which when added together gives the same effect as that single vector that's the meaning of resolution of vectors now that singular vector which is being um, split is called the resultant vector by definition a resultant vector is simply a singular vector that has the same effect in magnitude and direction as two or more vectors acting together so that's how we define resolution of vectors and then resultant of vectors now what we say 2d the word 2d means two dimension so when it comes to um, resolution of vectors in 2d we are simply splitting a vector into two dimensions which in this case is the x and the y um, dimension the simple quadrant x and y dimension so this is uh, a simple illustration. This is the x coordinate. This is the y coordinate. So this is a simple 2D Cartesian coordinate. All right. So let's what we have. Um, how do we resolve vectors in 2D? Uh, there are some things you have to note when it comes to resolving vectors in 2D. But before then, um, let's take. Let's when it comes to when it comes to resolving vectors. Of course. Vectors could include any parameter that has magnitude and direction, such as force, such as displacement, such as acceleration, such as velocity. So we can resolve any vector, all right? In most cases, you see force. You have to find the resultant of force or of a force, all right? But it doesn't actually mean that force is the only um, vector, okay? Sometimes you have to find the resultant of a displacement, of velocity, of acceleration. As the case may be. So, any vector at all can be resolved uh, in 2D. Alright, for our lesson today, we'll be using the vector force. We'll be using force for this. Alright, so let's look at this. Uh, so, we, said we talk about 2D as a two dimensional um, coordinate system. So, here's your x and here's your y. So, here's like my 2D um, system. Let me make this x a bit shorter. So I'll do this. Um, well, see the same thing though. So I'm having this. All right. So let's say we have a particular vector for this. I said we're using force. So we have a force acting like this. So this is my force, and we have an angle here. We we'll call this angle theta. So this force is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal. Of course. Here's my horizontal line, H, which is the X direction. Here's my vertical line, V, which of course is the uh, Y direction, if I want to. So here's the vertical uh, for Y, horizontal for H, so I have this. Alright, so from this, if I want to resolve this particular force into its horizontal component and vertical component, what do I do? Um, first things first, from this, if I look at this, Let's say I choose to form a rectangle from here. A rectangle of, let's say this way, try to get some having this, like this. All right, so this is force F. The horizontal component of the rectangle is called Fx. All right, so this is force in the x direction, Fx. And from here to here becomes force, but in the vertical direction, that becomes Fy, all right? Fx means force in the horizontal direction. F1 means force in the vertical direction. From this now, of course, um, from an idea of um, geometry, we can say that from here to here is equal to from here to here. Similarly, from here to here, from here to here, which we call F1, is also similar to from here to here. You could choose to extend it to this point if you want to. All right? So from here, it means that if from here to here is F1, then from here to here is also Fy. So we have this. So with this now, we can look at a right angle triangle here. Something of this nature. We have 
this, this, and this. Where this one here, we call it F, as you can see, F here. Yeah? This is an theta, this is theta. This is your 90 degrees, that's here. Here is Fx, that's Fx. And then here is Fy, that's Fy. All right, so we have uh, this diagram. All right, so if this is true, this is a right angle triangle. And for a right angle triangle, we can bring in our geometric ratios, the sine, the cos, all right? Let's take the sine of the angle. If we take sine of the angle, let's say sine of the angle here is theta. Now, from the idea of Sokatoa, so ka twa, we said sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So here's my angle here. The opposite is Fy. I'm having Fy opposite all over hypotenuse. So here's my hypotenuse. The side opposite 90 degrees, which is this, I'm having F. All right. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. From here, if I take Fy, subject of the formula, this is all over 1. That means Fy is equal to this times this. That gives you F sine theta. So this is your first note when it comes to resolving vectors. The first note is this that if a force or a vector is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal then the vertical component which is fy is equal to f sine theta the fy is called the vertical component of the force, that's Fy. Alright, so you're done with the vertical components. Let's look at cos. Let's take cos of the angle. Now, also from this diagram, if I take cos of theta, now, car, cos says adjacent over hypotenuse. If I have this angle here, adjacent becomes this part, that becomes Fx. I'm having Fx all over hypotenuse, which is F. So I have F here. Alright. Let's make fx subject of the formula. I'll divide here by 1. I'm having fx times 1. That gives you fx is equal to f times cos theta gives you f cos theta. So I have this. So hence, fx is called the horizontal component. Horizontal component. Of the force. So here's what to note, please. If a force or any vector is inclined on an angle theta to the horizontal, then the vertical component of the force, Fy, is given by Fy sine theta. Also, the horizontal component of the force, Fx, is given by F cos theta. Alright, so also note two. Also note, so let's look at a second scenario of this. What if I have the same thing, uh, the same 2D system, we call this Y, call this X, we have F here, I'm having F, such that the force is inclined at theta. Now observe, in this case, theta now is inclined to the vertical. This is a vertical direction, this is horizontal. So observe that the force is inclined at an angle theta to the vertical. In this case, what do we have? Of course, we can still form a triangle this way. We we'll have something of this nature. Um, yeah, we can form. We can form a rectangle. Of course, from this, we can still form a rectangle this way. Alright, so we have this. Um, in this case, this angle is equal to this angle from an idea of geometry. Alright, this angle is equal to this angle. We call this f of y, we call this f of x. So we have this. Alright, so if I bring down this triangle, I'm having 
this one here, I'm having this, this part here, this one here, which is coming now, this one here, which is this, uh, this is theta, okay, this is Fy, that's this, and this is Fx, I have Fx, and then I, don't forget we said this part is equal to this part, from our knowledge of geometry, why? Because they're actually alternate angles. So for this one here, vertical, the vertical component of the force, vertical component of the force that's Fy. All I have uh, from here, because this is the ninety degrees, this is ninety degrees. Take uh, cos, take cos of theta, cos theta equal to so. Uh, so, ka, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. From this angle, consider this angle here, adjacent becomes Fy, becomes adjacent Fy all over hypotenuse, that's F. So I have F here. Of course, this is over 1. So if I work this out, I'll have that Fy times 1, that's Fy is equal to F cos theta. I'm having F cos theta. That's one. Also, horizontal component. The horizontal component. That's Fx. If I take sine of this angle, sine of this angle. So sine of theta, sine theta is equal to opposite Fx all over hypotenuse. That's F. So I have this, of course, all over 1, work this out, fx times 1 gives you fx is equal to f times sine theta gives you f sine theta. So I have this. So here, here's the observation. In our first case, fx was f cos theta. In our second case, fx, that's the theta component, now becomes f sine theta. In our first case, Fy, which is the vertical component of force, was F sine theta. In this case now, our second case, Fy is now F cos theta. So here's the inference. When it comes to resolving forces or vector, it's not always cos theta or sine theta. Whether it's cos theta or sine theta is dependent on one thing, which is the angle of inclination of the force. All right? If the angle of inclination of the force is to the, is to the vertical, you can see this force is inclined to the vertical. In this case now, Fy becomes F cos theta and Fx becomes F sin theta. Alternatively, if I now have this case as we had in the first case, where F is inclined to the horizontal like this, where the force is inclined to the horizontal like this, in this case, we say fx is equal to f cos theta and fy is equal to f sin theta. So before you start using cos or sin theta, look out for the angle of inclination, right? I'm saying this angle of inclination. That's the word. Look out for your angle of inclination. If it's the horizontal, Fx is this, Fy is this. If it's to the vertical, this becomes your Fy, this becomes your Fx. So this is like the first thing you have to note when it comes to resolving vector. All right, let's look at something else. All right, so just look at the first condition when it comes to resolving vector. And we said the first condition is the angle of inclination of the vector. If it's to the horizontal or to the vertical, that's your first task. Your second task is to look out for the quadrant in which the vector falls. Now, usually, we have three quadrants in a 2D system. This is x, this is y, this is minus x, this is minus y. Perhaps we call this plus x plus y. We have four quadrants. Um, of a 2D Cartesian coordinate. 
Here's the first quadrant, here's the second quadrant, here's the third quadrant, here's the fourth quadrant. Now, here's what you notice. If a force belongs to the first quadrant, like here, if I resolve it vertically, if I resolve this force horizontally, is positive of um, x. Resolve this vertically is positive of y. If a force belongs to quadrant 2, as in this case, if I resolve it horizontally, it becomes negative of x. If I resolve this vertically, it becomes positive of y. Also, if a force belongs this way, the third quadrant, if I resolve this, it becomes negative of x. If I resolve this vertically, it becomes negative of y. Finally, if a force belongs here, or a vector belongs here, if I resolve this one horizontally, it becomes positive of x and negative of y. So in recap, this quadrant is positive x and positive y. This quadrant is negative x and positive y. This quadrant is negative x and negative y. And then this quadrant is positive x and negative y. So these are like the next issue not when it comes to resolving vectors. Now let's see how we can combine both conditions to solve problems on resolution of vectors. So let's take an example. Example, find the resultant find the resultant of the forces below. Let's start with something easy. Um, let's say I have this one here. Um, I have a force here called this 20 Newton, and this one here is um, 30 degrees. Let's start, let's start with this one here. Let's say I'm going to resolve this. Um, this force to both the horizontal and the vertical component. Now, what do I do? From this, we we'll know that, of course, this force is in the first quadrant in which both x and y are positive. But then, let's look at the um, horizontal component. The horizontal component, um, fx, we we'll have that fx is equal to, so let's call this force, let's call this f. Alright, so fx is equal to the angle of inclination, notice, is to the horizontal x. Right. So this is um, inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. To the horizontal, we said fx is equal to f cos theta. And that's equal to f is 20. So we're having 20 cos Theta is 30 degrees. So I'm having 20 cos 30 degrees. And my answer here is equal to. So let me use a calculator to get 20 cos 30. Um, 20 cos 30. So this is about 17.32 Newton. This is 20 cos 30. Also, let me get the vertical component. The vertical component The vertical component Fy We said Fy is equal to F sin theta That is equal to F is 20, so 20 sine theta is 30 degrees. 30. If I punch this, I'm having 20 sine 30. That gives me 10. So I'm having 10 newton. So I have successfully resolved this force to both horizontal and vertical component. Now, in some cases, you'll be asked to express your answer in vector form. To express my answer in vector form is simply the vector f is equal to the sum of all um, horizontal forces in terms of i plus the sum of all 
vertical forces in terms of J. So I have this. In this case, I'll have that the vector form F is equal to total horizontal force is um, 13, 17.32 Newton I plus for Fy, I have 10, 10 Newton J. We can factorize the Newton and have that in vector form F is equal to 17.32 I plus 10 J and put the Newton at the end. So this is how we express this in, this is 10. This is how we express this in vector form. So we have this. Okay, so let's look at another example on resolution of vectors in 2D. So in this case now we are given three forces, 150 Newton, 120 Newton and 80 Newton. We are asked to resolve these three forces into their X and Y components. That means we should resolve these three forces into their horizontal and vertical components. So what do we do? It's as easy as this. First of all, Let's label the forces. We are calling F1 to be equal to 80 Newton. What's the angle of F1? The angle theta 1 of F1 is equal to this 40 degrees. Okay? Let's get F2. So F2, we are labeling this 120 Newton as F2. Theta 2 is equal to now observe theta 2 is not just 30 because this 30 here is not is not inclined is not the angle of inclination of 120 to either horizontal or vertical component so what do i do is as easy as find the total angle of inclination of 120 to the either the horizontal or the vertical for this case i'm choosing the horizontal so I will take the total angle from here up to the horizontal. Total angle becomes 30 plus 40. So this one in total is resolved at this angle, which is 30 plus 40. That's 70 degrees to the horizontal. So here is 70 degrees. Our last angle, our last force, 150. So F3 is equal to 150 Newton. Let's get theta 3, the angle of inclination. F3, the or theta 3, F3 is inclined at 35 degrees also to the horizontal. So all of them are inclined to the horizontal. Alright, so let's look at summation. Let's look at summation of Horizontal forces. That's sigma fx. That's equal to. Now notice that in this in this um, question, I use the word summation. In my first example, I didn't use the word summation. Why? Because in the first example, I had just one force. While in this one, you are having several forces. That's f1, f2, and f3. So hence it becomes a summation of several forces. So fx is equal to. Now for this, let's recall what we, what we talked about in our quadrant concept. We said here was positive x, here was positive y, here is negative x, here is negative y. Alright. We call this quadrant one, quadrant two. We said for quadrant one that x is positive, also y is positive. For quadrant 2, x is negative, as you can see here, and y is positive. In my question here, two quadrants are played. Here, quadrant 1, which is here, this way, like this. Or you can, you can label this as x, fine, and y. You see, fine. Positive x, yeah? Positive y, and then negative x. So, positive x, positive y. Um, positive x, positive y, quadrant 1, I have two forces, 80 and 120. 
um, quadrant 2, negative x, positive y, I have just one force here. Alright, summation of horizontal forces. We said when the force is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal, if I look at all of this here, um, theta, they are all inclined, this is to the horizontal here, this is to the horizontal here, this one too is to the horizontal here. So it becomes fx because what there? f cos theta. In this case, it becomes f1 cos, since there are many thetas, that's many angles, it becomes cos theta 1. Observe it is positive because x is positive. Plus, let's look at f2. f2 is still positive. Why? It falls under this quadrant where x is positive. It becomes plus f2 cos theta 2. Cos because the angle of inclination is to the horizontal here. Then finally, for this one here, observe. This one falls in quadrant 2. What we said, if I'm resolving this, this way here becomes negative of x. So it now becomes minus, not plus, minus f3 cos. It is cos because the angle of inclination is to the horizontal. So cos theta 3. So we have this. Alright, so we have this as summation of horizontal forces. Let's impute value. This is equal to F1 is 80. So I'm having 80 cos theta 1 is 40 plus F2 is 120 cos theta 2 is 70 minus F3 is 150 cos theta 3 is 35. So we'll point this up and see what we get. Uh, let me get my calculator. So let's get 80 cos 40. This gives me about 61.28 in two decimal places. Or let's use four decimal places. 2836 plus 120 cos 70. That gives 41. 41.0424 then minus 150 excuse me 150 cos 35 150 cos 35 that gives 122.8728 alright that means if I sum this up Zigma fx is equal to, so I'm having 61.2836 plus 41.0424 minus 122.8728. That leaves minus, minus 20.5. Six eight Newton. Since its x direction becomes i, at this point we can choose to approximate this to two decimal places. This gives you minus twenty point five five Newton i. So we have this. All right. So this is the value of the horizontal component of the forces. All right. So let's now, let's now get the next one. Let's get the submission of vertical forces. So this is approximately minus 20.55 Newton R. Now you may want to ask, why did I use four decimal pieces here? Now in mathematics, the idea is this. The more the number of decimal places you use, the more accurate your result becomes. Alright? It's um, a mathematical concept. Or it's under numerical analysis. Alright? The more the number of decimal places, the more accurate the result becomes. So that's why I chose to use four decimal places, okay? If you want to use two decimal places too, it's still correct, it's still, it's still okay. But, but I would advise the more 
the number of decimal places, the more accurate your result becomes. All right, so let's look at the summation of vertical forces. So next concept. All right, so next up. Summation of vertical forces that becomes sigma f y. All right, let's get a formula for sigma f y. Of course, um, first is first. All of these forces we are inclined at an angle to the horizontal. So f becomes f sine theta. All right. For quadrant one, if I resolve this one this way, is positive of y. So it becomes a positive f one, which is seen as f one sine theta one. That's this. Next up, this one here. If I resolve this to the vertical, that's here. It becomes a positive value. So positive plus f two sine theta 2 next up f3 this one here if i resolve this one now vertically that's this way although it's in quadrant 2 it's still positive of y it's still, it's still positive of y so it becomes plus f3 so plus f3 sine theta 3 so i have this all right so let's increase values this is equal to F1, F1 is 80, sine theta 1 is 40, plus F2 is 120, sine theta 2 is 70, plus F3 is 150, sine theta 3 is 35. Alright, so I'll get a calculator and punch these values. So let's see 80 sine 40. This gives 51.4230 plus 120 sine 70. This gives 112.76 Okay, plus let's look at 150. 150 sine 35. 150 sine 35. That gives me oh in 4 dp. Sorry, 120 sine 70. That gives me 112.7631 plus uh, F3 150 sine 35 that gives me 86.0365 approximately all right so if i sum this up sigma fy is equal to 51.4230 plus 112.7631 plus 86.0365 if i combine this gives me a combined value of 250.2226 of course this would be in newton now since it's the vertical direction it becomes a j if i approximate this is approximately 250 points to two Newton J. So this becomes the total vertical forces. All right, let's now look at the, the resultant force in vector form. All right, so let's now get the resultant force. Before then, recall that recall that we got sigma fx as being equal to minus twenty points. 5, 5 Newton I. We also got sigma Fy as being equal to 
point two two newton j. So these were our two values for um, sigma f fx and sigma fy. So therefore, we said resultant. Uh, let's say fr f resultant fr is equal to sigma fx plus sigma fy. That's including the i and j's. So hence, sigma. So hence, fr is equal to fx. That's minus twenty point five five Newton i plus f y swing two fifty point two two Newton j. So this is now equal to minus twenty point five five uh, i plus two fifty point two two j all in Newton. All right. So this is the resultant force we are asked to find or to resolve it into the x and y components. This is what we get. Just in case you ask to find the magnitude of the resultant. How do you find magnitude of the resultant? For the magnitude of the resultant, the magnitude of the resultant is this. The magnitude of the resultant is this. And that's equal to the square root of fx squared in brackets minus 20.55 all squared plus 250.22 all squared. This is how we get, this is called the magnitude. This is how we get magnitude. And this is equal to, this is equal to, okay, so let's get this solved. This is equal to the square root of, um, punch this. Now observe this one is inside the bracket. That means for the fact that this is inside the bracket here, the square will cancel out the negative. So I'll have a positive answer. So let's see what this gives you. Minus 20.55 all squared. That gives about 422.3025 plus, let's look at 250.22 all squared. That gives you 62610.40484. So we have this. Alright, so that means the magnitude of FR is equal to the square root of Four two two point three zero two five plus six two six one zero point zero four eight four. That's six three zero three two point three five zero four. If I take the square root of this. The square root of 63032.3509. This is about 251 to 51 point. In this one place, 06 newton. Alright. So this becomes the value of the resultant force. This is how, so how we solve this. In some broader cases, we have to find the magnitude and the direction of um, the resultant force. So when we get to that point, we'll show you how it's done. Okay, but for this, let me show you how you get direction. Let's get direction of resultant. Look at how we find direction of the resultant. All right, so the direction of the resultant is given by the formula tan theta is equal to sigma fy all over 
sigma fx and that's equal to sigma fy we said is equal to 250.22 in newton all over sigma fy we said is minus 20.55 newton all right so we have this from here newton cancels newton i have that tan theta tan theta is equal to 250.22 divided by negative 20.55 uh, that's about minus 12.1762 approximately let's get theta theta will take tan inverse is equal to tan inverse of minus 12.1762 so tan inverse of minus 12.1762. So it means that theta, it means that theta is equal to minus 85 points in two decimal places, perhaps 0.3. Uh, three zero. That's three degrees. Now the question will be: Why is the direction negative? Actually, this value is actually eighty five point three degree. But it's telling you that the resultant is moving in the negative x direction. That's what it means. This negative means that it's just showing you a direction. It means that the resultant is moving in the negative x direction. All right. That means if I was asked to sketch this. So let's say you have to sketch, you say, find the mantle of the resultant and also the, the direction of the resultant and sketch it. If I were to sketch this now, it will be this. I'll have this. So this will be the resultant of those forces. I'll have uh, this. Um, now, since my star gave me negative of x, we know that this is negative region of x, this is positive of x. So negative of x means this side. So it becomes this way. So negative of x, this, I'm having this. So this gives you fr. fr is equal to the value that is 251.06 newton. The angle here, theta, is 85.3 degrees. All right, so we have it. All right, so this is how we sketch. This is how we find the direction of the resultant and sketch it. Don't forget, this is going to the x-axis because of the negative sign here. So as you mean here was positive, it would have been this way instead, I mean positive instead. Alright, so this is how we solve questions of this form.